So you're running or cycling along and all of a sudden you get a notification from your watch telling you your Garmin performance condition. Plus one, plus two, negative two, baseline, and you're thinking, what the heck does this actually mean? Well, if I really want an evaluation of my performance, I could always just turn on the Olympics and watch athletes run at 10 kilometers under 30 minutes and really get depressed at how I'm going. Or is that just me? Anyway, the Garmin performance condition is a pretty cool metric and it's something you should know a little bit more about. So let's get stuck into it in today's video. Here we go. Welcome back to the Trix Performance Channel. My name is Rob. I have a keen interest in running, reading, and the music of Michael Bublé, not just at Christmas, but the full year round. If you get any value out of today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel. It would really mean a lot. Also, go check out some of the content from Sean and Damo as well. So don't forget to leave a subscribe and like if you get any value out of today's video. But let's get stuck into the Garmin Performance Condition. So the Garmin Performance Condition is a pretty cool variable that tracks your performance on your current session, whether that be running or cycling, against your performances from previous sessions. It effectively compares how you're going in your current run compared to that of your historically tracked data. Garmin like to refer to it informally as a good day, bad day indicator. But how exactly does Garmin calculate your performance condition score? So Garmin uses three main variables to calculate your performance condition score. It uses your pace, your heart rate, and your heart rate variability. Now all three of these variables in conjunction will influence your performance condition, and they're all based off your historically tracked data in all three of those variables. Essentially what's happening during your exercise session is that your pace, your heart rate, your heart rate variability in that current instance is being compared to that of your historically tracked data as we discussed previously. Now what will happen during your run or during your cycle session, after about 6 to 20 minutes, you'll get your Garmin performance score, which essentially is a number that's on a scale from negative 20 to positive 20. But what does this scale actually represent? So for example, if I was going for a run and after 6 minutes, my Garmin performance condition score was plus four, and that tells me it's an improvement. What is actually being improved on this scale? Well, the rating system represents a 1% deviation away from your baseline VO2 max. So any positive value in your Garmin performance condition, whether that's plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four, etc., indicates an improvement in your performance away from your baseline VO2 max. Conversely, anything negative then, in terms of negative one, negative two, etc., means it's a decrease in your usual performance away from your baseline VO2 max. So I've provided here an example of my training session. So as you can see, my Garmin performance condition during the session was about plus two at its best, which essentially means a 2% increase or a positive performance increase compared to my baseline VO2 max. Again, if my performance condition score was negative, then the opposite would be true, and that would be a decrease in my performance compared to my baseline. So as we discussed before, the performance condition score is influenced by heart rate, heart rate variability, and your pace. Now, as soon as we see heart rate and heart rate variability being influencing factors, we should immediately think, how can I improve the accuracy in my heart rate data? Well, the best way to do that, and the way I keep harping on about in numerous videos, is to wear a heart rate strap. So in order to improve your accuracy with this data, please invest in a heart rate strap, or if you've got one, wear it. I know it's uncomfortable, but it will improve the accuracy in your data, which hopefully means to better training program intervention and programming. But what you also need to consider and what is pretty important is that when you first buy a Garmin watch and you're doing your training sessions and you, you get your Garmin performance condition results, is that there's gonna be a lot of fluctuation early on with these results when your watch is still trying to uh, gain some information on how you run, your fitness ability, your VO2 max, all these different things. So there's gonna be a lot of fluctuation early on in your sessions for at least the first couple of weeks with your Garmin performance score. So what I'd suggest in your first couple of weeks when you're using your Garmin watch is not to take too much notice of the performance condition early on because as we say, it's still trying to get some information on how you exercise, how your body handles the exercise, your pace, and all these different characteristics. So it's still trying to frame an accurate picture and understanding of how you as an athlete compete in your session. You can also monitor the performance condition score live on your app as well. So you can create this as a widget to see live during your sessions if you want to look at it. Although, do you really get much information out of it live? I'm not so sure. I think that you can get an understanding of how you're going during exercise anyway without getting that notification necessarily. So practically, you should probably think of the performance condition score as a way to supplement how you're feeling. So similar to the video I discussed, 
the Garmin stress test results or the HRV results there as well. So like those two variables are good and they probably give you a decent indication of how your body's handling exercise and, and how your body feels during exercise in the case of the performance condition. But you should always understand there's inherent levels of error with this technology in some way. So similar to heart rate variability, it shouldn't be the sole determining factor on your exercise sessions or what you should be doing during particular days or in upcoming weeks. Just use it as a guide to help supplement your decision making rather than driving and enforcing it. So that's about all you need to know regarding the Garmin Performance Condition Score. If you have any questions about today's video, then please don't hesitate to get in contact. Happy to help out in any way, shape, or form. I encourage you to go have a look at some of the other content we've got across the channel as well. So Sean and Damo putting some good stuff out there. So consider giving us a like and subscribe if you've got any value out of today's video. But that's all we've got time for today. So good luck on your fitness journey, whatever that might be. Go out there, have a crack, and have some fun. But until next time, we'll see you later. So as we discussed earlier, hey. so that's about it for the Garmin performance condition. So short and sh so that's about it for the Garmin performance condition. So that's about all you need to know for the Garmin performance. So that's all. So that's about. Uh, hey, <laughs> Jesus.